Let's take a look at the pro football focus rankings for the defensive side of the ball. Overall, the Browns' fourth highest graded defense, uh, but the team's top three defensive tackles finished 33rd through 35th out of 37 defenders who logged snaps for Cleveland. And you see uh, that's where the uh, rankings are um, in terms of all qualifying NFL defensive tackles. So, uh, Jeff Risden, we've also mentioned, you know, the, the problems with Malik McDowell. He was probably one of the better ones. He will not be there. So this is a critical, critical, was an important need. Now it is a critical area of upgrade that is necessary. Oh, absolutely. They have to get better on the defensive interior. Look, they are a team that relies on speed at linebacker. When you have guys like like Jeremiah Owosu, Koromoa, um, and, 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 you know, that whole group really it is predicated on not having blockers in their way. They need defensive linemen who can maintain a block, who can stack uh, up uh, and, and, and keep them clean. They didn't do a great job at that. Malik Jackson had some moments. I, I think his play declined as the season went on. Look, they, they've got to get somebody better. They've, they've tried, they've tried the draft, you know, uh, you know, between uh, the last couple of drafts, the guys just haven't worked out in the middle rounds. They That doesn't mean that they can't try it again, but uh, they, this is an area where you can find really good serviceable veterans. And that, quite frankly, they don't need a, a dynamic guy. They just need guys that are better at doing the, 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 the nuts and bolts for the defense. Uh, because the rest of the defense, look, when they're healthy, they're, that's a really strong back seven, back eight. If you can give me, you know, one or two free agents, you know, in in the budget range who who have some experience, who understand what they're going to be doing in in Cleveland, you you can go out and, and and help yourself a lot there. Hopefully, you get some development from some of the young guys. Hopefully, you find a a diamond in the rough. You know, that, that is an area where there you know a lot of third through sixth round draft picks wind up becoming very good, you know, serviceable, you know, better than serviceable players. They look, that opportunity is going to be there for the Browns, but they have to get it. And, and this is another one. They don't need just one. They need two in this offseason. So I, I, I'm hopeful that they will attack it in free agency and also in the draft. It's not worthy of a first-round pick. Um, defensive linemen, if they're not pass rushers, they're not. They're, that's just not a premium position. It's not a pre- premium position in Joe Wood's defense. But if you can get a guy in the third round, fourth round, that's better than the guys that they've taken in the last couple of years in the third and fourth round, uh, you got to keep taking a crack at it because uh, w- what they've got now isn't good enough. All right, so uh, we have um, a look at a couple of them. These are um, guys that would be defensive interior linemen's best fits, um, and they uh, say the Browns would work with these. So first one, DJ Jones from the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, you see the grade. Um his career high at 73.2. You see the Browns team that would be interested in it. Um, and, and you see, you know, 14 tackles for loss or no gain, second to only Aaron Donald. And again, that's a guy that's probably not going to break the bank, but uh, there's a name to listen out for DJ Jones uh, from the 49ers. Yeah. And, and the fact that he doesn't go backwards when, when, look, the biggest thing that the Browns need, aside from a guy who can keep the linebackers clean, is a guy who, on third and two, isn't going to get pushed backwards by the opposing right guard. Um, that that's been a massive issue for the Browns for some time. That DJ, that guy, that guy's not moving backwards. He he has some anchor to him. Uh, he can play as a nose, but he he's, he's aggressive enough that he can you know with his hands, with his with his lower body strength. That that that's a perfect guy. And and, and again, this is a guy. Five, you know, two years, ten million dollars probably gets it done. Um, that that's affordable, and that 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 would provide such an impact. It makes JOK look even better behind him. And that honestly, that that's my goal for if I'm the Browns' defense is to to find ways to get your featured players to be better and and put in better positions. Getting a guy like that in front of JOK makes him that much better, and I I, I like that idea. <laughs> Another one, and, and you'll be a little bit more familiar with this one, Malik Collins uh, plays for the Texans. Um, and and you, you look at it and you see the um, the number of uh, snaps that he's played. Six straight years, 500 snaps. They list the Ravens, Bills, Browns, and Jets um, as teams that should be um, interested in it. And again, he, he they like the upside of an interior pass rush. If you get a little bit of push in the middle to go with – with 
you know, Miles Garrett and potentially if you re-sign Jadavian Clowney, boy, that's uh, that's a lot of trouble for an offensive line. It is. And Collins, Collins is, is, he's, he's had an interesting career. He want, he went from being the low man on the totem pole to being the best that the they really 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 bad parenthetically speaking Texans defense was this past season he was probably he and Roy rookie Roy Lopez were their best defensive linemen those guys are not household names they look were they great no but again this is a guy he's better than what the Browns have now this is a guy he he is an ascending talent he's he's got some ability I, I remember watching him at Nebraska this is a guy who does have some violence to him who can you know. Push, push the pocket back a little bit, you know, maybe, maybe uh, get a cleanup sack or two or create a cleanup sack or two for the outside guys. Uh, again, that's exactly what the Browns see. They, this is not a team that needs, you know, a top 20 pick on the interior defensive line. This is a team that needs functionality, and, and Malik Collins is a functional guy that's going to be affordable. So, yeah, I, I, I love that one. Uh, I, I actually would probably prefer him to Jones simply because I think uh, his ability to play across multiple spots. He can play the one, he can play the three, he can even play the five if they want to go to an odd man front. Uh, not, not, not something that they look to do often, but uh, it, it allows them to, to have some you know, flexibility. Look, Miles can play anywhere, Clowney can play anywhere. You get that sort of flexibility for Joe Woods. I, I, I like the coach's chances with that.